You're watching Medical News Network, your trusted source for the latest in medical news and information. I'm Mike Wigenstein, and thanks for joining us. On today's show, we take a very special look at osseointegration, or bone grafting, and dental implants. What's new? How can it change your life? How can it help you? So if you're missing teeth, wear dentures, or you know somebody who does, then stick around. You don't want to miss what our guest has to say today. Welcome to an educational and comprehensive discussion with today's top medical experts. Your trusted source for the latest in medical news and information. You're watching Medical News Network. Welcome back. We're in studio with Dr. David Arpin. Dr. Arpin is a periodontist practicing in the Las Vegas market. He's a member of the International Congress of Implantology, the American Academy of Implantology, and the American Academy of Osseointegration, a small but select group of dental professionals specializing in the regrowth of bone and implant placement. Dr. Arpin is also a nationally recognized leader in bone growth and regeneration. Dr. Arpin, welcome to the show. Thanks for the invite, Mike. Now, I invited you on the show today because we talk a lot about on the show, I visit with a lot of doctors and I interview a lot of doctors, but the latest stuff that's available. And one of the reasons I really want to talk to you is because of the new way that you're able to grow bone. But before we get into that, tell me a little bit about yourself. You're in Vegas now. How did you end up in Vegas? Tell me a little about your history. Well, I've been in practice for 17 years, 15 years as a specialist in uh, periodontics with a focus on dental implants. I graduated the University of California, San Francisco, did a residency out in Chicago at Northwestern University. Um, I practiced in San Francisco for a number of years, and then I now practiced in Las Vegas. Okay, and I want to, you practice with, and to me it was a, a big issue, and I made a comment to you, you're actually in practice with your wife. She's I in, am. In, in, I practice in an endodontic periodontic office, that is correct. Okay, and she's there to help you. Does it, does it have a benefit for you having a specialist from a, another viewpoint? It, it does because a lot of times the diagnosis from the endodontic specialty actually has a tremendous impact on what we do. So it's always nice to have the consultation when somebody's right there in the office. Do you think sometimes them. it allows you to help people that may not be able to be helped anymore? Absolutely, else? And especially it allows us to intervene right then and there. All right, let's get into the bone regrowth and the implants. First, what are implants? We had a conversation about somebody that obviously was confused about them. So tell me, in a short bit, what is an implant and, and what can you do with it? Truthfully, Mike, I think people really want to have teeth that look and feel natural and chew like natural functioning teeth. Dental implant is actually just a, uh, it is anchored to the jawbone in a similar fashion as a normal tooth. And what happens is that we are able to place these implants virtually any place in the mouth that we want to right. now. You, you brought a video clip to show that. I did. Okay, let's take a look at the clip real quick and kind of explain to me what's going on. Mike, what this is simply showing is that whether you're missing one tooth, two teeth, three teeth, or all your teeth, we now have the ability to be able to place the teeth that will look well, function well, any place in the mouth. So you're telling me if somebody's had dentures for 20 years, you could technically give them a full set of teeth. That is absolutely correct. Just like their normal teeth. No limits. That is correct. All right. Let's get into real quick, and I see all, all the teeth are in. Let's talk about, because this is a big issue I know, bone growth, bone regeneration. Tell me what you're doing. In my understanding, we're going to get into some clips later, is that up until very recently, and, I, and that they've always cut a piece of bone from somewhere and put it in. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing that's different. Essentially what it is is that when people want teeth to look and function naturally, the position of the tooth is, well, it needs to be where it needs to be. And oftentimes we find that people don't have sufficient bone to be able to place an implant where we would like the tooth to be. So growing the bone back, recapturing that to have a stable platform is something that we absolutely need to do. Okay, I want to stop you. I was going to ask you real quick. Dental implants, not a recognized specialty. In my understanding, anybody can do them. General dentists could have done them. Not, never done one before, could do one, took a weekend course and do it. Doesn't really even have to take the course, does he? Well, dental implants are more than simply drilling a hole in the bone and placing a screw in it. Well, that's what I want to get to, because you were talking about rebuilding the bone so you could place the implant 
where it's supposed to go. I had brought a picture and obviously to show that the imp somebody had put an implant that was sticking out the side of someone's jaw. Uh, in your graciousness, you didn't want to embarrass anybody by showing it, but do you th do implants get put in? I mean, do you see it in your practice where somebody puts and they just put it wherever the bone happens to be versus? Well, the biggest problem is, is that when people actually lose their bone, we are then left with trying to figure out how to reconstruct the teeth in their natural position. So what we do is we actually recreate the bone to be able to place the teeth in their natural function and position. All right, now I want to get back to, because I know we have some clips where everybody see them, but traditionally, bone in dentistry, bone grafting, they have taken surgically a piece of bone from your hip, your knee, your chin, basically then bolted it into where the bone was missing and hoped that they grow together. That's true. If, if you really think about it, your body already knows how to make bone. And it takes living bone to grow new bone, Mike. And so the only way to have captured that in the past when we need to grow a large amount of bone back was to actually harvest it from somewhere else in the body. We don't really need to do that. Just a quick point though, those normally, normally my experience has been the harvest points, whether they got it from the hip, the knee, the chin, long after the implant has healed and gone, those tend to still be problem points because they were surgery points. They certainly can uh, add some complications to the procedure. They make it more time consuming. It, oftentimes requires a general anesthetic and essentially what you're trying to do is harvest the actual bone to get some living cells to be able to grow the okay. new bone. Real quick, with that in mind, I realize that time is an issue. I say, maybe, what is it that you're doing to regrow that bone now that is different in dental medicine from how it's ever been done and where did that come from? Actually, the procedure utilizes a routine technique already in use by physicians. What we've been doing is actually taking the living cells from the reservoir of the cells that actually grow bone, namely from the top of the hip. So we don't have to take the actual graft that's living to get the cells. We can actually just take the cells themselves. Now these are the cells that create, that make bone. These are what your, your hip is producing to rebuild your leg bone, your arm bone. Absolutely. And now, where did, where did this technology come from? Technology came from when they were actually looking at the study of why does a graft work? Because the graft works because it has all the living nutrients, it has the cells that actually create bone. So really, it's the cells that are living that create bone that are necessary to create bone. So now, that's you, really all we need. And you've told me they've used this, uh, oncologists have used it, uh, orthopedic surgeons have been using orthopedic this technology. Orthopedic surgeons use it. and. It's a, it's a routine thing. Your body already knows how to make its own bone. If you were to break a leg, Mike, your body knows how to repair that. So essentially what we do is we simply take the reparative mechanism or the cells from where, they, where they're reservoired to where we need them to grow new bone. And this is as opposed to what we call as traditional as bone in a bottle or donor bone from someone else. These are biologically, genetically, a perfect match for your body. They are. And what does, is does it build better bone than if I was to use bone in a bottle or a graft bone from a cadaver? Well, only living bone can grow living bone. And so what we need to have is we can grow larger amounts which will then allow us to place implants where we would like the implants to be. In, in other words, let's say you're missing Let's say you've been wearing a denture for an extended period of time and we've lost a tremendous amount of bone. What we can do now is we can actually grow large amounts of bones where in the past the, the grafts were limited to the extent of what the bone could grow. All right, we're going to have to take a quick break. When we come back, I, wanna, I know you have a lot of video clips on bridges and you're very opinionated on bridges and implants, um, costs. Uh, and, and basically the elimination of pain with this procedure. You're watching Medical News Network. We're in the studio with Dr. Arpin. We'll be right back.